Hey, everybody. Welcome to Away Games, the Chicago Cubs podcast. Uh, much like JT Real Muto, I have talked to doctors I just know, not my own doctor, and they've said it is actually still okay to talk about the Cubs. It's not the most healthy choice, but we're allowed to do it. Uh, you I'm know, Kevin. in 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 JT's defense, um, yeah. he is he is known for catching things, and That's true. If that means COVID. Then uh-huh. then so be it. There is really his body, his, his choice. You know, his, his body, his choice. He's having a terribly down year. He, I would say, almost bragged that he'd gotten COVID several times at this point. Like, <laughs> so good job, JT. You're really doing doing your uh, living your best life out there. I'm Kevin McCaffrey. That's Adam Mamawala. Uh, yeah, it's fun to, you know, in a year like this, I guess it's fun to see other teams have some supremely dumb shit happening. And the Phillies are that right now. Yeah, big time. I mean, it's it's been a, an interesting competitive advantage, theoretically, for the uh, Blue Jays this uh-huh. season. But, uh, hey, I mean, I guess let's start there. Congratulations to the Orioles, who are now 500 in an impossibly difficult division. Oh, my mm. God. Incredible. And they've done management wise, they've done absolutely nothing to get here. Really? You look at no, they, they haven't signed anybody. They were intending on tanking yet again. Uh, they have tanked for at least, I think, four straight years. It really sucks because the uh, there there is a really good contingent of Orioles fans. The ballpark's totally. great. And yeah. uh, it's they, they really don't deserve how, how that team has been managed uh, from from the top of the organization, mainly in terms of ownership and spending. But my gosh, yeah. they're 44 and 44 in a league where everyone else is sort of expected to make the playoffs. I guess all they needed to do was uh, move that left field wall back. That was the mm-hmm. difference. Just push it a few feet back, and all of a sudden the <laughs> Orioles are good somehow. And uh, good against the Cubs. They beat the Cubs uh, yesterday. Uh, four, four, 2 was the last well, the last game as we record this. That was the last Cubs game that happened. They did. But, uh, but despite the, the Cubs loss there, let's start with some more positive news. Uh, sure. Yesterday's game, as we're recording this on Wednesday, was led off by an Ian Happ home run. And, and, and should I say more specifically, all-star Ian Happ. All-star Ian Happ is first all-star selection. And it's great. It's kind of unexpected to me, even though it is extremely well-deserved. If you look at any statistical metric on the year, Ian Happ has been one of the best offensive players in the National League. Uh, and he he super deserves it. This is his first All Star appearance, and it's really it's it's great to see him get that because as Kyle Hendricks is maybe the most shining example of these things are never you can never take them for granted. Kyle Hendricks yep. was for many years one of the best pitchers in baseball, still has somehow never made an All Star team, and it's just a nice thing to get to check off on your bucket list for a career. Yeah, completely. Um, uh, you you know that it means a lot to Ian Happ, especially as someone who yes, he's a he's a very top. Uh, draft pick, but um, mm-hmm. you know he he had his struggles being being someone who was thought of very highly and had this great rookie campaign, and then get sent back down to the minors. And as he talked about on the compound, um, well, that was like a, a very difficult time for him mentally, which I, I'm sure it would be um, when you I, I think probably have made the assumption that that's not going to be where your career goes. Um, so credit to Hap for battling through some of the uh, the adversity there, and it's it's cool to see. I thought David Robertson certainly was deserving of an All Star spot. Um, I mean, there there were definitely bigger snubs across both leagues. Yeah, Carlos Rodon. Um, yeah, and now what about Dylan Cease? Did he ultimately get named to the team? Or I haven't seen him named yet, but he yeah. certainly should be named there too. Former former Cubs prospect and, uh, as you know, very successful White Sox. Uh, Dylan Cease. Yeah, that was one of the biggest, if not him and Ty France, I think, stuck out to me in the yeah. American League as snubs. Carlos Rodon, obviously. And one thing I like, uh, Carlos Rodon's, a uh, wife is very active and outspoken on Twitter and she was talking a lot of shit and I appreciate it. Uh, she was on the, the right side of history about it. She's pointing out that he led the national league in war. You have to be fucking kidding. You know, like it was, uh, yeah, she's right. She was right on every, uh, at every stage on that. So I, I don't know how he doesn't make the team and it, it Cubs wise. It's bizarre that David Robertson, that the Cubs did actually have three deserving all-stars on a team that yeah. is this, this not good, you know, but that's true. It just, yeah. the, the, those individuals have, been that good yeah and all of them might be traded all of them might be yeah at least you've you know and wilson Contreras got getting his officially getting his third uh starting nod as the national league all-star starting catcher and yeah the the trade deadline is coming up in three weeks i guess august 2nd mm-hmm. is going to be the trade deadline and uh we've uh, evan altman of cubs insider was saying that he was hearing that it, uh he had heard from 
sources uh, that Ian Happ was being aggressively shopped as well, who uh, has another year of control beyond this one, unlike Contreras, who's, uh, you know, team controls up at the end of the year. David Robertson is 100% getting traded. If he doesn't, I, I don't know what we're doing here. So he's he's going to be right. traded. And the other two, it's like, I don't know how you feel, because it seems like Wilson Contreras is for sure getting traded. And I still can't emotionally go, even mentally, quite mm -hmm. go there slash believe it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's one of those things where I just can't let myself be pre-worried about it, even though I know that yeah. it's probably going to happen because I know that it's going to hit me really hard if and when it does. So it's like, I'm going to experience it either way. I don't need to spend the next three weeks stewing about it. Um, yeah. Easier said than done, of course, but I just, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, carpe diem, you know, enjoy mm -hmm. every sandwich. Like, really, you get yeah. to, like, enjoy the moments we have Wilson Contreras, who's going to start, by the way, alongside his brother William in the All-Star game. Very cool. Well, we're doing All-Star talk. Yeah. First first uh, pair of brothers starting since the Alomar bros. Yeah, so we can like, thank uh, Blake Snell for breaking Bryce Harper's thumb for that <laughs> opportunity for S Snell, the, the third Contreras brother, Blake Snell, uh, really, really sneaking in there to help. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's so that's all good news. Those those guys getting named all stars and having two of the I mean, Wilson Contreras is by far the longest tenured Cub since he was signed as like a mid teenager and has just mm -hmm. been in this organization a million years. Uh, Ian Happ is close to I mean, I guess Hendricks has been around longer, but Ian Happ might be third or something in terms of longest yeah. tenure in this organization. Yeah. So seeing those guys make the all star team is great. I uh, want to do a good news run. Just all the good news we have. Yeah, at the beginning. please. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll, th I'll throw the next one in. We get uh, just Nico Horner has been really good lately. Mm -hmm. uh, Nico was he, after the first month or so of the season, I was starting to feel like, all right, we know he makes a ton of contact. We see the exit velocity is pretty good. Uh, not elite or anything, but pretty good. And he just kept hitting line drives into gloves of people. Like it just seemed like right. it would never fall. Getting babipped. Yeah, getting babipped to death. And it's just like, is this guy a guy who has weird qualities that just seem like they should work and don't? And it seems like the luck has finally come back around. He's hitting over 300 now. And uh, and it's just a really good at bat every time. Obviously, we know he's looked really good defensively uh, by the eye test and by the metrics mm -hmm. at shortstop. So uh, and in yeah. a way that I think we didn't necessarily anticipate, like, I don't know that we thought his, his shortstop play would be as, as good as it's been. And really uh, just highlights how unnecessary Andrelton Simmons was. The when I see Andrelton Simmons playing second base. Yeah, I am getting paid four million dollars by a team who hates giving million dollars to anybody. Yeah. lately to do it it is just like such a bizarre creative failure of roster mm -hmm. construction because andrelton simmons speaking of guys who don't like the backs that's a that's a big one uh andrelton simmons his only quality is playing defensive shortstop at a level right. above that uh, which almost anyone has ever played it in the game uh, sure but like when he's playing second base there's no reason for this guy to be in the game there's right. no reason for him to be in the major leagues if he's not playing defense at shortstop. So it's tremendously bizarre and uh, he can go. Yeah, completely agree. Um, here's some here's some good news. I mean, in a year like this year, we have to look for, for good news of the Cubs outside of baseball. Uh, happy birthday and happy becoming a dad to Justin Steele. What a week. Yes. What a week for Justin Steele. Happy birthday. Beca he became a dad. I, mm -hmm. I somehow missed. I saw all the uh, all the birthday wishes for for Justin Steele. And that was that was cool. Uh, I somehow had missed that he actually that the baby had been born. I baby has been born. He's starting today uh, and, and apparently has gotten very little sleep. So told David Ross that he would do his best to to sleep a bit last night. We'll nice. see how it goes. <laughs> I saw, as we know, uh, anyone who's who's listened to Justin Steele interviews or read, uh, you know, what he, what he tweets about or used to tweet about more, I guess, uh, knows he's a, he's a competitive video gamer. And uh, he posted a, a shot on Instagram, like, ready for this kid. And it was like a bed sort of set up, I think, for him solo to give the mom uh, to give mom some sleep uh, with a video game set up directly <laughs> in front of it. It, it. So he's he's ready to go. But yeah, what a big friggin week. And also in the midst of Justin Steele's best consistent run as a pitcher. Yeah, that we've seen yet, yeah, too. He's been good. He's been striking out a lot of guys. It's been I mean, just what a time in that guy's life. 
Yeah, absolutely. He's got that that uh, pre pre dad strength. Don't I feel like we always see that in, in in athletes. Like they become dads, or they're about to become dads, and all of a sudden they just start playing really well. It's like somehow <laughs> mentally there's this like extra uh, motivation of, of yeah. doing well. I don't know. It's it's pretty cool. That's it's very cool. So yeah, congrats to a friend of the show, Justin Justin Steele. There, uh, farm system wise, there. Uh, Good news, bad news. I guess uh, Pete Crow Armstrong on several of the main, uh, a lot of like a lot of the prospect ranking systems are doing midseason updates. Pete Crow Armstrong has jumped Brennan Davis to be the uh, ranked by most places. It seems like now as the Cubs' top prospect. Mm -hmm. Good news, bad news, because Pete Crow Armstrong has been great uh, so far at the high A levels where he's playing at now. Um, Brennan, and obviously. Speak, speaking of, uh, of of birthdays, hit a dramatic walk off grand slam about two hours shy of his twentieth birthday. Pete Crow Armstrong. Was that Pete Crow or was that Owen Casey? Oh shit, it was Owen Casey. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. But that's also good news. Owen Casey yeah. hit a walk off a walk off granny to end his teen years. Adam, Pretty what was cool. the last thing you did as a teen? Not that. Uh, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't nearly as cool as that. Yeah. Do you remember? I, Do you have a, a memory? I, I remember know, like what I did for my 21st birthday, but I don't remember what I did like 19 into 20. Yeah, I I think 19 into 20. I was living in Muncie, Indiana. I was going to Ball State University and I was staying there over the summer. My birthday is June 15th. And uh, a lot of my friends treated it as a sort of reason to come back to campus midsummer. Mm-hmm. So I had a big party. I can't remember if that's the one where I I was sitting on the edge of my porch and there was a big cement block and it just became mm-hmm. dislodged and landed on my leg and I was just trapped under a big cement block in my front yard while a party was going on inside what for a while hell? and I didn't want to ruin the party so I got out I dragged myself out from under it I still have a pretty significant scar because I never went to the doctor uh and I and I went and so I tried to take a nap on the trunk of my car and then when other people showed up to the party, this girl named Amanda, uh, basically her headlights came crested over the hill. And then I was just like bleeding on top of my car. And she was like, what the fuck happened? Uh, so it wasn't quite hitting a grand slam. Uh, but I think that's the last thing I did yeah. as a 19 year old. Jeez. I mean, I, I don't have a specific memory of it, but uh, for me, it was it was May of 2007. So I assume I was watching Alfonso Soriano. Eh, there you go. That's uh, that's not bad either. Watching someone else hit bombs. Was um, I bleeding? Who can say? <laughs> who can say? Uh, impossible, impossible to tell. Uh, yeah, but far, uh, f- in terms of farm system stuff, Fangraphs now has the Cubs up to the six, number six farm system in the league, which I think they're clearly the high man or yeah. woman. I don't know uh, for what Fangraphs is, as uh, uh, how, how Fangraphs mm-hmm. identifies, but uh, it is, they, they are clearly the highest on the Cubs, but six is good. So, yeah, I mean, you know. What can I say other than uh, hashtag Jed's League? <laughs> hashtag Jed's League. Just give us eight more years, and we'll have the number one ranked farm system. We're gonna uh, we're gonna flip Owen Casey for a younger prospect. Don't I worry. just can't, you know he's not a teen anymore, Adam, and he just doesn't <laughs> qualify on this organization's timeline it's anymore. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Uh, you got any other good stuff? I mean, good. Uh, Jordan Wick's first round pick last year as the draft is coming up. Uh, the draft is mm-hmm. coming up this Sunday. Uh, Wick, uh, last year's first round pick, just won five innings and had 10 strikeouts, which is the best game he's put together yet. And uh, he's he's sort of rounding into form a little bit. So that's nice to see. Nice. And I remember when he was drafted last year, the the narrative around him was like, oh, he's someone who you could see in the big leagues within like a couple of years, like much, mm-hmm. much faster than most of the people drafted. Um, so do, do you think that that has changed at all in the past year? Do you think he's still someone who like we'll probably see next year at some point? I don't know if next year I would but the year after that, I think maybe more uh, more of a realistic timeline. But the the pitchers can the pitchers, especially like him, who pitched at a high level in college and in a big league uh, could move fast. So maybe maybe you could see him coming up towards the very end of next year if everything goes perfectly from here on out. But right. Yeah. But probably more probably more the year after that. So. Nice. Yeah. Um, other other impressions over the over the past week in terms of the Dodgers series, which like featured some surprisingly winnable games that the Cubs didn't win. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, did they lead in every one? I think they did. Yes. I and and uh, in the Sunday game led by a lot. 
<laughs> yeah, I was driving home from Chicago. I was driving Chicago to New York on Sunday. And I'll just say one of the most interminable worst games to ever listen to on radio. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It the, Pat Hughes did note when it, we were two hours into the game and it was the third inning. And <sighs> the Cubs just, I mean, obviously they got up huge. You hit a grand slam in the first inning. PJ Higgins hits a grand slam to put the Cubs up. I think five, nothing uh, yeah. after he hammered one off of noted domestic abuser, uh, Julio Urias. So that was great to see for all sorts of reasons. And then like the Cubs just really made a point of blowing every game in in different ways throughout the weekend, we had Seiya Suzuki just drop a fly ball to help them blow one of the games uh, before yep. that, too. It was, and I think this was, uh, there was some sort of discourse online about, uh, about like, you know, where the Dodgers are versus where the Cubs are. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I saw Brett Taylor of Bleacher Nation was saying like, here, it's not just the Cubs not spending. It's that the Dodgers did a million things right over the past several, you know, past several years, decade that the Cubs didn't do. And I guess that is true. Also, they traded for superstars and signed them and kept them like Mookie Betts is there, you know, and and, uh, they got a guy playing first base. Who's a pretty big deal. Freddie Freeman. Uh, So I think this is like, if we turn the clock, I I guess it's it it, for me, it is a good frame of reference where the Dodgers are versus where the Cubs were this are are this weekend, because you look back to 2015, 2016 and uh, market wise, money wise, talent wise, there's no reason the Cubs shouldn't, continuously be the second best team in the national mm-hmm. league here and they've become a complete disaster uh while the dodgers continue to dominate so right uh one quick note about the sunday game uh i, I guess you were listening to it not watching it gavin lux in the outfield makes clint frazier look like <laughs> willie mays the first inning i i didn't I, see- I genuinely think i could play better left field in the major leagues than gavin lux I did not see what happened, but they uh, they were talking about how how crazy the, the he had two misplays in the first inning before they shifted him back into the infield. Yeah, and the second one was particularly egregious, and you saw uh, Urias reacting to it, understandably, because it was like a line drive hit right at him mm-hmm. that if he had just moved literally at all, he almost certainly catches if he just runs in on it. Yeah, I think he was afraid that if he ran in and misjudged it, it would get past him and clear the bases. So he played it safe. Mm-hmm. But like any major league outfielder should be breaking on the ball immediately and at least making a play on. It was like a line drive hit maybe 10 feet in front of him. And he just like stood there like a statue and let it bounce one time and then threw it in. And Urias was like, what the fuck are you doing? It is weird to see guys who are who are decent at the more supposedly skilled positions of because Lux came up as a shortstop. He plays second base now, yeah. mostly uh, with since Trey Turner's over there at short, but it's weird to see guys like that who can't play the positions that you just stick the fat guy in, typically, like <laughs> you know, like which is left field and first base. Yeah. Uh, that was another thing that happened during the game. Uh, Patrick wisdom threw away a ball. Uh, David Bodie couldn't make a play at first yeah, base. David Bodie's not a first baseman for one thing. No, no, a better a better first baseman makes that play for sure, but it also wasn't a good throw from Wisdom. Right. And I saw uh, this was a good note uh, I saw from Bleacher Nation today, but Patrick Wisdom has the worst fielding percentage among mm. any regular in baseball. So <laughs> we do keep hearing talk about his plus defense. And I do wonder sometimes what we're looking at. I, I guess we're talking about the athleticism he has because he has a great arm and he has the, the ability to have range over there at third. Mm-hmm. But I mean you can't paper over and fielding percentage can be overrated a little bit, but if you have the right. worst in baseball, it's bad. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, that's, you know, but I, I will say, and we're jumping around here a little bit, but that's fine. Cause there are no rules. Um, mm. Patrick, I would love to see Patrick wisdom in the home run derby. I'm sure it's not going to happen. He's not a big enough name, but at this moment, the home run derby field already pretty awesome. So this is, yeah, this tell me about day. it. Uh, Pete Alonso is going to be defending his back-to-back titles, and he is just incredibly fun to watch in these derbies. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. is in it, which is great. Albert Pujols, which, as much as we love to shit on the Cardinals and all things Cardinals, like if this is really his final year, which please for the love of God it really should be, 
he should be at the all-star game yeah. i get it i'm um, it's, it's fine i'm fine with it same with I cabrera think, like yeah. it makes sense especially and it's nice when there's like one person who doesn't deserve to be there from each league and they're like let's let these guys hang out <laughs> yeah, let these um, old these old yeah fellas. i mean cabrera is certainly more productive than than Pujols, i would say but um so that's the three of them and then it's juan soto and kyle schwarber um there's also been some rumblings of stanton i don't know if he's like confirmed or denied whether or not mm. he would be willing to do it but uh, right off the bat like pretty good field um and i i don't know i'm sometimes that ends up being more fun than the all-star game so i'm i'm excited god i think most of the time in recent years yeah. it's, it's been better and i i think the for fun i think mm -hmm. who you want to see in the finals here is uh alonzo and schwarber those guys because schwarber should have won if we were going playing by the yeah. rules in the year i was there in there, person right? it was yeah like and ultimately it is an exhibition and this was before they were playing for a million dollars that i would have been much more pissed imagine if it was for a million dollars at that time mm -hmm. like if, if you're schwarber you've got somewhat of a beef there yeah. um it goes without saying that the change to to time the derby rather than give people outs is the single greatest change in the history of any sort of exhibition. I mean, it was getting unwatchable where guys are just like watching balls slightly not down the middle. And yeah. Just taking pitch. You don't want to see people taking pitches in a fucking home run derby. It's no, so you want boring. you want some urgency to it. So that that right. has been a, a genuinely great, great rule change. And yeah, that's I mean, that should be that should be a pretty fun time. Uh, I mean, the only I would say if it were not for the safety of fans and the incredibly small children, one of whom will die at some point, being in the <laughs> yeah, outfield, dude. I don't understand how they allow that. No. We're, we're going to extend the nets, but we're going to let someone's five year old be out there when Stanton is hitting 120 mile an hour seeds into <laughs> left center is yeah. insane to me. But like, I think it's for fan safety that they don't let people just like rapid fire pitches. But at this point, because of the fact that no one really follows the rules about letting the ball land before they throw another pitch, mm -hmm. it does feel like it might be better to just like tell everybody, hey, keep your head on a swivel. This is going to be rapid fire. Like as soon as you want to throw it, throw it. And then there's yeah. no discrepancy about like, you know, someone might step out because they're exhausted. Yeah. But I feel like that might be a more fair way to do it. I think I think so. And it it is it is a really fun it's a really fun thing and it seems like this is a pretty fun group because i feel like there was a couple years there sort of like the dunk contest which is the right. most comparable thing Oof. where guys who were the best at it just stopped doing it which i guess mm -hmm. we're currently in that era of dunk contest right oh big time yeah it's people yeah. that are like you know g league call-ups mm -hmm. um i mean it'd be the equivalent of having like frank schwindel no disrespect in the <laughs> no disrespect who, the just, home run who just hit a tiny tank in iowa yeah, so yeah, yeah. he's uh, he should be on his way back maybe we'll have uh, a technically a first baseman back playing first base soon would be right. neat. Um, since we've been going with catcher P PJ Higgins and uh, second baseman David Bodie for the most part at first, right. lately Rivas is on the is on the team still too. But uh, yeah, it would be nice. It'll be nice to get Frank back any minute here. So that's good. Um, Frank, uh, I was just looking up uh, Patrick Wisdom speak uh, home runs, seventeen homers so far. That's good. Yeah, that's a that's good. He's been worth a war according to. Uh, to baseball reference. that's great and i mean schwarber is having a an interesting year where his, his power numbers are insanely good and he's batting like i don't know 215 or something like that yeah i mean wisdom's hitting 229 uh and then with 17 bombs and then uh Kyle Schwarber has put up 1.7 war according to baseball reference with 28 homers hitting 216 uh but you know he his uh, obp is all right 329 yeah so yeah. it's not great i mean honestly 216 329 517 is sort of like a uh it's a bit of a usually javi usually javi has a higher average on that but that's yeah. sort of a javi line um yeah. or even or if you want to go old school kind of an andre dawson line andre Ooh. dawson would be in the low to mid 300 uh on yeah. base with slugging over 500 so i mean it's it's good he and kyle schwerber leads leads the league in runs and home yeah. runs and I just wonder if the Phillies are going to non-tender him. I mean, we, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, is he going to cost too much? Can they? I, technically, they can't non-tender him, but maybe they'll find a way. Forward-thinking ball clubs like non-tendering guys who hit the most homers. All I know is that Nicholas Castellanos is going to hit a home run as he's being non-tendered. <laughs> <laughs> while they're announcing his non -tendering. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just Nick Castellanos has been released and, oh, there's a drive. Uh, yeah. So it's now, as far as the All Star Game is concerned, um, I assume they're going to have Kershaw start, just because it would be cool, right? Like, why wouldn't they? 
I think they should. Yeah. Yeah. And and Kershaw has been very good this year, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's not like he if, if the game were in Cincinnati, I don't think he starts. Mm-hmm. But given that it's in L.A. and he's on the team, I feel like he has to. Yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a Pujols Cabrera situation that right. he's here. He's been he's been very good. So he absolutely should get the start because, again, with this is kind of how I feel about Oscars, uh, Oscar nominations and mm-hmm. wins. Uh, judging art is dumb I- anyway. So I root for typically who I want to see win is who's going to give the best speech because that's right. this is just a television show now, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's why it sucked when like Sean Penn beat out Mickey Rourke when Mickey Rourke mm-hmm. was for the wrestler. Rourke was just nuts and bringing his dog on stage and shit. Like that would have been, Rourke should have won artistically, but also yeah. should have given, it would have given the more fun speech. And like, this is an exhibition. We're here to have fun. Clayton Kershaw should start the fucking game uh, in L.A. And also bring Vin Scully out to announce an inning. That would you know? be very, very cool if he would be up for it. I, yeah. I would s- assume they're going to do something involving him if he's willing to be there. Right. Yeah, I'm sure I, I'm sure they would uh, they would check in with him. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you want to see that. And, uh, you know, uh, God, I, I don't even know who would I'm trying to think who would be the the run away who, who's like in Cy Young conversation right now Carlos Rodon is is the other guy I would have thought of you know for for starting for the National League uh since Scherzer I mean if so yeah Scherzer time. right exactly if not yeah. for missing time and Scherzer right. he's come back and and uh in his two starts has been incredible he's been great yeah yeah uh, Corbin Burns has been good again, but yeah, I mean, I think there's nothing more fun than that than having Kershaw go out there and do yeah. it. Yeah, and I tell you what, I mean, the Cubs are very much due to get an All Star game sometime in the next, I don't know, five years, you'd think. And mm-hmm. I really hope if and when that happens, they don't fucking suck. It's mm-hmm. it's really a bummer when the team that hosts the All Star game, or even like the you know the team where the Super Bowl is played, is just like a garbage organization. I it would not be as fun if the Cubs are the current version of themselves. Uh, when there's an all-star game and also uh, for you and I the, t- the clock is ticking on us becoming C-list celebrities enough to be in that celebrity <laughs> softball game I mean we've known pe- you and I both know people who have been in that game it's yeah. not unachievable no no it's it's weirdly achievable uh based on who we saw there a couple years ago but yeah it, it's uh <laughs> it would be and you I, I think I would have to get in the cage to do it yeah. you but you're you're kind of in mid-season form you're oh, I'm on playing a like three, three four games a week yeah yeah, I have not played in a long time. I had to stop my uh, my trimetric workout today because my knee gave out immediately. So oh, no. I got I mean, I just turned 40. So things are, you know, things are falling it's apart. The old, here, sem- the old cement block wound <laughs> rears its ugly yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I'm going to go wherever they got natural grass from, uh, from, from here <laughs> on out. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would also like that. I mean, it, it, you're, I think you're very much right that it sucks when the All-Star game is a place where you don't think of baseball being played that year. Otherwise, you know, it's just mm-hmm. it makes the vibes bad. So uh, hopefully the Cubs earn their way back in. And that uh, I think it would be great to start with uh, keeping one of your two All-Stars uh, choosing one. So, you know, where I don't even want to entertain it because it makes me sad. But if yeah. they do get traded, where do you think the likely destinations are for the two of them? Perhaps I mean, the I think the ones we've seen rumored most, uh, you talking about Gavin Lux in left field lately. Well, there's a, a guy who's worked himself into a plus defensive left fielder, and he's just solid across the board in the way that the Dodgers tend to like and respect. Ian Happ, I think, mm-hmm. is someone who you, who you could definitely see going to L.A. And L.A. always has a good farm system, even though they never draft as high as the Cubs usually do right. lately. So uh, I think you know i think that if you're talking about trading in hap i think you shouldn't because you still have him under contract next year and uh he is an all-star and if they're going to compete at all last year next year you have to not only replace the guys you trade out at the major league level but you have to go beyond that and that's why i i don't agree with you know the idea of selling selling them those two parts off now um but i think you'd Hap LA Dodgers is what I is what I think first and then Contreras the Mets have a hole at catcher well McCann just got hurt I think right yeah so I think I don't know if I don't it's tough because it's you know Twitter boy Steve Cohen gets I don't know how much involved he is with this stuff but like the PCA for Baez trade last year a lot of Mets Mm -hmm. fans are pissed about because of how good 
Pete Armstrong looks. But so it's I don't also know how... informed by the fact that the Mets didn't make the playoffs. I mean, if they make the playoffs and Baez has big moments, no one's going to yeah. feel that way. And Baez had a great second half. People remember the thumbs yeah. down, but he hit over 300 for them. I think right. he was he was great. Mets fans ended up loving him. I think the Cubs will probably trade Will, uh, Wilson Contreras and Pete Armstrong for get, uh, Trevor Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Just totally rejigger the pieces around yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, do whatever the saddest thing is. So yeah, I would say uh, Contreras to, if I had to guess, Contreras, Mets, Hap, Dodgers. And then uh, the Twins I've mentioned as a team that needs back into the bullpen help. And the Cubs obviously have so many relievers there. I think maybe start taking a peek right. at the Twins farm system. I mean, would you rather be uh, us right now or, or a White Sox fan? What's worse? <laughs> I mean, it's a good question because the White Sox. This is worse when you expect to win and you're not. It is. And then it, it, there's the expecting to win and you don't. And then there's the when your team is choosing not to win, which is what we've gone through as Cubs fans, right? When you have right. all the uh, the ability to. So, you know, I don't know because I think there's still, I, I mean, Larusa needs to go mm -hmm. from the White Sox. But you look at the core of the White Sox team and there is a competitive team still there, you know? Right. But Reinsdorf historically has never really spent that much. And so, you know, I think if you if you're going to say which major league roster do you like better, the White uh, the White Sox definitely have more there. Sure. But uh, yeah, but they're, the vibes are bad down there. man. Like they're like fans are pissed. The team doesn't seem to be having fun. Did you see the video of Tim Anderson finding out he was an all star starter and like no one had any reaction? To no, it? I didn't. They showed the comparison of last year, finding out that he made it as a reserve and everyone's like jumping around and as, as they should be. And then this year, like everyone just kind of sits in their chairs and a couple of people go and like pat him on the shoulder. It's gross. It man. was bizarre. Yeah. I don't know what's going on over there. I mean, Tony I know what's La going on. Tony La is going on. Tony La is a big fun suckers. We know that. Yeah. And I mean, that's why we said they shouldn't have hired him in the first place. And apparently uh, Han their GM wanted to, he preferred AJ Hinch uh, and uh, Reinsdorf jumped the line there and just got his old friend wow. in there uh, who he, who they previously fired in the eighties. So, right. you know, and it's uh, not to say that like the old heads don't have a place in baseball. Like literally Dusty Baker's done a good job in Houston. Uh -huh. Buck Show Walter has been very good in, in New York. Uh, but Tony La Russa just fucking sucks, man. Fucking sucks. He does good stuff for dogs and that's it basically yeah. which i which i do appreciate uh his, his work with animals well, when great. you're so prone when you're so prone to running them over as you're drunk in your car mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> makes yeah, sense I mean, that you would <laughs> yes exactly so he uh he he's got to go and then us i don't know man i like i guess mid-season vibe check in for you how are you feeling as a cubs fan right now because we're getting to the point i mean i think we're sprinting mm -hmm to the trade deadline yeah. and then sort of rechecking in. But yeah, how are you feeling as I think, I mean, I think that I have, um, I, I would say that like post in so much as we're post COVID, um, I have like changed my relationship with stand up comedy fundamentally. Mm -hmm. Like that, that my, the pressure that I put on myself to like have a show every night and drive myself crazy has changed in a way yeah. that I think is positive for my mental health. And I would say that my relationship with the Cubs in this moment is very much the same where like I used to be someone and I know you and I have both been this way where like mm -hmm. I would rearrange my schedule and life to accommodate the Cubs because yeah. I wanted to watch them that badly, even, you know, early on in the season. That is not the relationship I have with them now. I very much have like, if I am around, if I am at home, if I'm, you know, walking through the park and I want to listen to something on my phone, that's how the Cubs fit into my life. The last time, honestly, that I sat down and watched a full Cubs game start to finish, it's been a little while. Like, yeah. I, unless I just have a, a block where I'm not doing anything, it, it's gotten harder to justify. But I feel like I'm still enjoying the Cubs and a lot of players on the team in the context that I have given them at this time. What about you? Yeah, we. I mean, we sort of say this, we've said this many times that we root for every cub that's a cub you know mm -hmm. we root for these players i don't blame these players for the overall quality of the team even though a team is made out of players they're all doing their best the problem is many of them shouldn't have jobs on a team like the cubs and i'm happy right. that they're getting to play in the major leagues but it, it is a failure of ambition of the team that uh we we have not chosen to love but just happened to love you know uh, that that were in this position in in the first place. So I I do still root for every player. I uh, there are individuals that I follow 
more closely, guys who are maybe going to be on this team more going forward. You're Keegan Thompson, you're Justin Steele, for instance, those guys who've been great recently too. That's the, That's been really fun to watch. Uh, and then, you know, like this is not, this is not, baseball is not a computer simulation to me. It's not mm-hmm. a hedge fund. It's not. So for that reason, like when a Wilson Contreras is traded or an Ian Happ is potentially traded two guys who there's a huge threat about what a good guy Ian Happ was even during yeah, his demotion yeah, that yeah. You, you should uh, check it out online. It's not hard to find on Twitter. We retweeted it uh, at away games pod is where we are. When you show that you don't care at all about humans who are here and you're fine cashing your checks as an organization, it makes me want to check out to the point where we've talked about it. Like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this podcast. And that has nothing mm-hmm. to do with you or us as friends. <laughs> like I don't, is we do this podcast for an hour a week and then it takes another half hour or so to post it. And then there's some other things, whatever, but is this team as they've chosen to be worth even that time to me? I don't know. And I like, so they've, they've taken two people and you and I who have, cho- who have loved this team so much and rearranged our lives around it. Obviously we've told all our stories about that. Uh, and they've chased us into feeling like this. So I still read everything. I still root for them. I don't I don't know how much of my minutes I can commit to this world, you know. <laughs> You're talking the Cubs world or the world in general? Because if it's we're polar, talking right, Cubs right, right now, but it's okay. both. <laughs> but, but like, yeah, I mean, first Cubs, I would quit this podcast before I quit the rest of things, you know? So yeah, it would be uh, right now. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I, they're not, the, the organization isn't worth much of our time. The players are, are worth the attention and, uh, and I'm rooting for all of them, but Yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, um, it's a it's a real risk for me to be attending a, a Cubs game in the second week of August because it could yeah. very much be like that situation last year where I'm like, who do I even know on this team right now? <laughs> yeah, big who dis top to bottom yeah. with the, the fucking. Yeah. Right. Uh, and sometimes a who dis is fun. Like mm-hmm. Narciso Crook came up and he like I had seen him in spring training a little bit, but he's an older career minor leaguer came up and got a cup of coffee and that was like fun he seems mm-hmm. fun and uh and sometimes can we get dakota meccas on this goddamn team what are we can doing we here? get a fucking dakota meccas i don't know what are his numbers like let me i'm gonna look him up right now but i know yeah. he was injured but i don't even know why he didn't he he was on the taxi squad for a couple of days at the end of last year or maybe it was 2020 i can't remember but right i wish he had gotten a chance there to at least get into a game Talking about, yeah, and there have been so He's soon many... to be the only Cub organization guy on the damn podcast at this point. Yeah. Uh, so in 10 games, he's got an 844 ERA this year. Okay, that's not great. He shouldn't so be called that, up. I'm sorry. That is that's less wrong. good than we were hoping I was for. Wrong. But, uh, you know, it's that, but that is a guy who has been successful in previous years, right? Uh, and a guy who, you know, we know a little a little bit now personality wise and yeah it would i guess that's what we have at the end of this year right is some fun debuts either in the way that they'll be a part of the future or we're just like happy for them getting that well i mean like the cubs the cubs have a three-game series at city field in mid-september and i don't know how you feel about like your attendance at those games but like it's gonna be a little tough if the mets are about to clinch a division and the cubs are about to lose 100 games to be sitting there for this Yeah, I have no plans to go. I don't know if that would be the first year I haven't gone. If someone asks me to go, I probably will. But I don't think I'm going to initiate plans to go see the Cubs uh, several subway stops away from uh, from where we live in person. It's a bummer. It is. That's an that's an Aaron bummer right there. That is that is an Aaron bummer. So that's <laughs> we started with all the positive shit. So I mean I yeah. think that's pretty good on our end. That that's good. And there was some positive stuff. The last baseball thing I want to throw in is just that the uh, the MLB draft is this Sunday, and. Uh, coverage starts at six. So if you want to check that out, Sahad of Sharma at the athletic wrote up, uh, some of the players, the Cubs were possibly looking at, you can find some mock drafts, uh, different places. If you want to study who, who the Cubs might have a shot at, uh, I've seen Zach Nito who has 
uh, a, a pretty good name. A shortstop from Campbell has been. Mocked I mean, that's like already an obvious shirt just by virtue of his name. <laughs> it is. It is. And maybe that maybe the obvious shirts fell. It's there. just like him with the thumbs up and then it says Nito. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Shirt wise. Good to go. I'm hopeful that they get one of the top end high schoolers who might drop to them. Tamar Johnson or Elijah Green. If they're if either one's there and the Cubs pass on them, I'll be apoplectic about it. Um, but yeah, you know, but they, then in that scenario, do you have to give people a bunch of money so they don't go to college? College? like is that the risk or am i misunderstanding yeah. how it works yeah but you have but you've got this you know a good amount of money to offer there at the seventh pick uh, as right. the slot so maybe you have to go a little over slot for one of those guys if they drop to you probably especially green who had been rumored as the number one pick but um yeah i i just i i just don't i don't want to see them like saving money to go a little over on the second round i want to see best player available at the seventh pick you know yeah, yeah. um so that's what I'm looking for draft wise. Nice. All right. Well, I don't think I have anything else. Uh, you got anything else? No, <laughs> I got right. absolutely non tender me, daddy. <laughs> non tender, both of us. Uh, but before you do that, buy my comedy album that comes yes. out on Friday. Pre order it. It's called Statistically More Relatable. Um, very proud of it. I recorded it at Zany's uh, in attendance and doing a guest spot was Ken Schultz, also uh, Sarah Sanchez, and our friend Tyler the Pastry Man, uh, De Patisse. So uh, check it out. I think it's a good album. I think it's, it's it's certainly you know if you're if you're spending any amount of money to watch this fucking Cubs team, <laughs> I know that you have ten dollars to spend on something that actually is a good quality product. Yes, and you tried hard and uh, mm-hmm. you you and you got the win that day. And also, yep. uh, you packed more of the house on a percentage basis than Wrigley is doing these days. That is so, true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mainly, so, yeah. mainly the bleachers, but you know, <laughs> still, <laughs> yeah, we got to, but go, please do go get Adam's album. If you listen to this, uh, a solid nine bucks and, uh, and change for, for a, a good, good comedy album, go do it. Let's make Adam number one on iTunes when it, when, uh, the charts drop this Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Yeah.